In the recent past, we, uh, and I've always wanted to do that because uh, I've always been fascinated by the dominant species in the ocean, which are the killer whales, the orcas. And I will not say killer whales anymore, although they do kill whales. But that's not just to kill it, it's to find food. Uh, there's no animal that I know of that kill to kill. They kill to survive, to eat, to feed themselves. And if you look at orcas, you find out that not unlike humans, they occupy the entire planet called planet ocean, or 71% of the planet, from the Arctic to the Antarctic. And although they are everywhere, their numbers, unlike ours, are not that big. We're talking about approximately 80,000 at the most. They can kill anything, they can eat everything, and nobody kills them. Well, other than killing each other, we the same. The difference is orcas don't kill each other. We uh, are finding out that they're a very, very complex society. They um, have a very strong group or school, if you want, relationship. So much so that from one school or one pod to another, uh, you have different dialects. So they can recognize each other. Because let's not forget that if our primary sense is vision, their primary sense is acoustic. So everything happens through sound. Finding food, finding their way, they can echo sound, or communicating with each other. And we can say that they have languages or dialects, if you prefer. So from one part to another, there's changes of sounds. And that gives them the opportunity to either join forces with another part to hunt or to play. They do play because they are so successful, like we are on land, that they have time to play. And they are also if you look at where those populations are, some of them are resident populations. Others are transient. Others are open ocean. Others are always in groups. Sometimes they are in small groups, like two or three. And they, unlike other marine mammals, they, don't cross, they do cross the equator. They go wherever they want, just like we do. Very, very interesting society. Some of them only feed on marine mammals. Others will feed only on fish. And others will feed on everything, just like we do. And they also are very picky, very interesting, because when they are successful, like, for example, they have been in the Monterey Bay when you have young mother whale coming with their new calf, they will wait for a mother whale to make a mistake, which is to take a shortcut and go across the bay instead of going around the bay where they find protection. And that mother whale will make that mistake only once because ultimately the orcas, a pod like 20, they will exhaust the mother and the calf and ultimately drown the calf and then start to feed on it. And the mother will keep going on north, and she will never take the shortcut again. And the scientists do know that. Now, what do they feed on? They will feed, in this case, because they are so successful, on the skin or the fatty tissue, if you prefer, the blubber. And then they will feed on the tongue. It's just like the French, you know. <laughs> They're very picky, and then they abandon everything else. And unlike in our case, nothing is wasted. There are other species, birds or sharks or whatever, that will come and feed, and in the end, there's only bones left. Nothing is a waste in nature. Everything is connected. And we can follow that everywhere in every species, on land or in the ocean. 